Hey, it's Tristan here. Uh, we're with Joshua Swans running the camera for us. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about um, wanting a frosty tea burner. I make them a little different than frosty with a smaller, smaller tea. So I'm going to run through real quick how to make one. If you've got a drill press, uh, usually I, I use a lathe, but um, most people have access to a drill press. They're easy, easy to make. Um, which are, this is a half inch, so we've got a half inch by half inch T and a four and a half inch long half inch black iron nipple. So this is what we're going to end up with and what we'll start with is of course our, our nipple and our T and um, a drill bit. Let's get set up for it first. Um, my vise has got a little notch in there to help to help me stand things up straight. But you don't want to trust it. You want to make sure that you get in here and that you're straight up and down. Um, and before you do that, you want to take the, the top of these tees. I've got a, a cast line on them and and they're notoriously hard to get started right on the top of that round and, and that rough. So take and throw it in your vise real quick before you drill it. And then file that line down. bit of a flat so your drill bit can start on that instead of wandering off the side. Now we're going to drill and tap this um, for a, a 7 16 20 um, hole and so we want to use a uh, 27 six or 20 25 64 saying on is it 25 or 27 I have to tell you 25 64 is what we're using and in my rush here I bypassed an important part. We gotta make sure that we're down the center of this. And you wanna take and make sure. That's pretty good. We gotta come this way a little bit. Okay, good. So we're in the center. We got this in straight. We're gonna put our T on. And it's particularly important when you start to start really slow on this. Let that just sit there and make a little divot first. You don't want to just plow right in to drill in that hole. There we go. And once you start seeing some shavings go, you can put some pressure on it. Um, so we 
got a hole. And that hole straight in line with our barrel, so we're going to be good there. Next thing is we'll tap this hole. Um, we're going to use the drill press just to keep everything straight and centered. So you don't use the power setting on this right here, but you can throw this in and just use it to get started. Just keep a little bit of light pressure. Just let your, your hand float as you start cutting this. Well, it's not gonna, not gonna operate for me tonight, is it? I think we got a lot of tooth cut, but we're going to try it. <laughs> Bringing that out now. be better if we had a little more bite in the drill press you can probably see this is wobbling a little bit but I think we're gonna be good enough I can feel feel where it was Once you get through, you'll, you'll feel it. I don't usually go all the way down. I like it to be a little bit tighter. Um, if it's if you didn't go far enough, you can just come back and, and finish that off. But for now, we should have our basic concept with the hole straight down the straight down the shaft. Now the next thing, now if you don't have a vise like this, you can do the whole thing by using a pipe flange like this. Clamp, clamp this to your drill press table and you can get the same thing done if you don't have a, a vise with a line in it and movable and all that stuff. So, and the other thing is when you, you line it up, you'll know that you're really in line if you look at C, like this line isn't in this, it doesn't look like it's in the center, but we know it's in the center of, of that pipe. Um, these, these cast T's, they're oval and all kinds of weird shapes. So don't let that throw you, just make sure that you're, you're putting it in the, in the real middle when you do that. The next thing you're going to want to do to get your, we're gonna build this, this assembly here. 
For half inch, that's an 025 MIG contact tip and a quarter flare by quarter iron pipe size fitting. Now they normally don't come with a thread right here. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to drill that thread to match these MIG tips. The ones I get at the like Lowe's or Home Depot have got a six millimeter thread on them. Um, some of them have quarter inch threads. So you're gonna have to just make it match what you've got. Um, so like I said, I got a six, a six millimeter drill. You can get them in industrial hardware stores um, anywhere. Uh, let me get that drill bit. Um, so I can put this right in here and line it up again um, if if you're doing it with with this base you can get a bushing just like this to hold your your piece in while you while you get your your tap set up to go that's really smart Put this in. I gotta bring this table up. <sighs> the the ends of these are close enough to the size we need for tapping on a six millimeter tap that we can just fudge it, it's nice soft brass and it, it works fine. If you have a quarter inch or something, obviously you're gonna have to drill it to tap, so make sure that you you get that correct and you don't end up end up breaking a tap or something, because that's the worst. I love tapping brass. It's easy and soft. Make sure you back up every once in a while, clear your chip out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one out and feel by hand finish it again. You don't have to go super deep. Those, those MIG tips only have about a quarter of an inch. Uh, of uh, thread on them. All right. And here's what they look like uncut. It's like I said, an 025 MIG tip. You can get them at the any hardware store and you just got this so now this is lined up with the center and that's lined up with the center and when we go and put it all together just make sure you stay lined up when you start It's a little tricky on that curved surface sometimes you want to really make sure you yeah you, you uh, start easy okay there we go 
Now, what you're going to want to do next is you're going to cut this MIG tip down, and you can see it in this in this one that I've already got finished. That I cut this MIG tip shorter, and once you cut that. Be careful because it's beryllium copper and that's toxic and so don't don't just sand it down or something do it with with a hacksaw or if you're gonna use a cutoff wheel do it outside and make sure you don't don't breathe anything um, and what's gonna happen is that little tiny hole is gonna get smeared shut and you need to get um, this is a file tip set the welding store has them to clean out torch tips and you put it in there and you just clean it. You'll have to push the little bit away and then, then clean that so it's nice and nice and, and, and cleared out. If you don't do that, it's not going to run right. You're going to have problems. You want to make sure that that's clear and, and breathing good. Um, sometimes it helps when you're trying to cut to um, go ahead and, and put them in this brass piece, tighten them down real good to hold it. it gives you a place to place to put it in a vise for a saw. It may roll, you may need a pair of pliers. Your goal when you're you're cutting is you want to end up right in the range of being I don't know if you can see the light. You should be able to just see light underneath the tip above the throat on this. Now, the way Frosty does it, he uses a bigger T and he's got to be way higher. But if you use a half by half by half, you need to be down fairly close. Uh, we can talk about tuning another day, but if you're down too far, you're going to suck a lot of oxygen in there and you're going to have problems. You won't be able to weld. You'll you have scale making scale in the forge um, you gotta it's gonna have to be up there now if you come up too high you're gonna be too rich and you're gonna make a lot of carbon monoxide so it's a balancing act don't kill yourself and don't ruin your projects you got to find the place in between and like I said we can talk more about that later um, but get it about there and then it's really going to matter about what you put it in the forge. These don't run very good on their own. Um, if we put gas on this right now, it would sputter and, and pop and everybody would think, well, my burner doesn't work. You got to put it into a forge and then you have a cone. You make a cone, I'll show you right here. I've got a little, little forge right here and down in here I've got a burner under the table pointing up and you can see here my finger that there's a cone in here it doesn't have to be great I've seen them run with tiny little cones too big of cones you're looking for about a 12 to 1 run to rise on that on that cone um, but like I said you got to have something in there for it to run right and then once you get that far then we can start talking about tuning and making sure that you'll be able to forge weld in the in the uh, forge that you're trying to make. But anyway, thanks for hanging in with me and my my ramblings. And thanks, Joshua, for running the camera. Thanks a lot.